Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys some of the things that you can do with your NAS whilst in self-isolation. Let's face it, a number of us are either working from home right now or we're being forced to effectively be at home self-isolating so we can push through this whole COVID-19 stuff. But many of you are looking at the corner of the room, be it your home office, maybe your front room, and you're seeing a NAS device sitting there and apart from enjoying your media and backing up your devices, it's not doing a great deal and you're kind of looking at it going, there must be more to this device that I've got in the corner of this room than what it can be doing. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell you seven things you can do with pretty much, not all, but pretty much all NAS devices right now. There's a few exceptions, and obviously some of these are very brand specific, but the majority of these can be done on pretty much any NAS out there with a couple of exceptions. So, with that repetitious beginning out the way, let's go into number one. The first thing you can do with your NAS right now while self-isolating is going through that photo collection. Let's face it, a number of you have probably got decades of digital photos backed up onto these devices and the idea of going through decades of photos let's face it is exhausting the very idea of sorting through them and thinking my god there's just thousands and thousands of photos to go through right now and of course thanks to modern NAS development and modern NAS software particularly from Synology and QNAP you are able to use AI powered photo recognition with Synology Moments and QNAP QMaggie this application which is available for the majority of their NAS ranges allows you to just scan and index your entire collection of photos and it will return with AI embedded programming and AI embedded recognition go through those photos and present you a better cataloging system. This is obviously combined with um, different sequencing and search tools available from both NAS brands, but it allows you to scan those years and years and years of photos that you've taken with facial recognition, thing recognition, things like food, locations, landscapes, items, and of course, facial recognition to lay to tag people and then allow those tags to be used as a system of recognition on those albums. What that means is, rather than having to go through literally thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in some cases, of photos from your past, you can allow the recognition and the tagging to be applied to these albums via that software and allow you to export that information and therefore, later on, you can go, right, I want to look for photos of Tim, or I want to look for photos of food, particularly fish in food, or I want to see locations or different kinds of photos. You can search that way rather than looking for file names. And it will allow you, during this quiet time, when you've got a bit of free time in your hands, perhaps, and this device sitting here in the corner, vibrating along, not being used, allow you to go through those old photo collections and make something a bit more meaningful and accessible going forward. The second thing you can be doing right now is playing old retro games. That's right. The majority of NAS devices that are sitting there doing nothing can be used as an old arcade server. Now, there is lots of programs out there, both, both um, available directly as an easy means or as a container that you can install on these devices to turn them into retro gaming centers, be they over the network, over IP, or locally with a control pad or a Bluetooth controller that you can just connect to the rear of the device via USB and therefore play the games on these systems. There's one very particular popular one known as Retro Arch that you can install inside um, Acer Store and QNAP systems and have HDMI output. But there's other um, localized ones that you can access um, on the NAS via your network and access over the network via your local PC on a Synology NAS. Now I've done videos on the installation of these, hopefully here on screen. And of course there are, you know, legal loopholes that you should really you know think about really when you're going to be doing this particularly with roms that you're going to be accessing try and go for freeware one to know there's a lot of freeware available on the internet archive you can go there something else i've mentioned on other videos um but it'll allow you to utilize your NAS as a retro gaming server. And it's incredibly straightforward to install a retro arch and a lot of uh, ROM packs that you can download. And there's loads of free ones out there and freeware ones or ones that have become license free that you can then access with a controller on this NAS with an HDMI output or locally via the network on a Synology NAS. The third one moving forward is to play with Linux VMs. The majority of NAS systems, as long as you've got one that's got an Intel CPU and at least a gig of memory, 
you can play with a Linux VM. I've been playing with this uh, quite a lot and doing videos on this for the last few weeks and in the past, of course. But you can install um, uh, Linux containers uh, on a Solange NAS or use dedicated Linux software on Asus Store and QNAP NASs um, to allow you to set up a Linux VM either locally with HDMI output and keyboard mouse known as KVM, keyboard video mouse, or over the network if you choose to access it in your local system and play with Linux. And Linux has come very, very far. It's no longer the kind of complex, hard to get into platform it once was. Now it's incredibly easy to get into right now and to play with it and play with some of the programs and the configuration options. Now's a very good time to have a good, you know, play around with Linux as a platform just to see how it compares with Windows or um OS X in your own operational environment because you might find there's some shortcuts available to you with Linux and particularly as a VM when you're on the go after COVID uh, and all of this isolation stuff has calmed down. Number four, make your own podcast. It really is that straightforward. Mo the majority of NAS platforms in their unofficial app centers or on their third party app listings allow you to download the podcast generator app it allows you to attach a microphone or pre-recordings if you choose and run a podcast server from your nas it allows other people to hear your thoughts what's going on right now you can produce it it allows you to put graphics and just host it like any other podcast and allows you to host the files from your nas and podcast generator the more recent versions allow you to do a lot more meta background stuff on these files and allow you to create something approaching you know quite high production standard so if you've got a lot to talk about in a bit of free time this is something you can do and maybe it's something you've always wanted to try out it's an option open to you number five copy all of those cds dvds and blu-rays that you've got at home that are just gathering dust chances are like a number of you I have moved, you know, I've moved on to diskless platforms to enjoy my multimedia. I've got a lot of digital files. I've got things that I've purchased online. I've got things that I stream on online services like Netflix and stuff like that. And at the same time, because I'm not, you know, I'm not um, 15, 16 or whatever, I've archived a lot of optical media in my past. Music CDs, albums I've purchased or DVDs and Blu-rays that I've purchased. These are things that I still have. Now, you can buy uh, DVD readers very, very affordably. You can pick them up via USB connection pretty much anywhere. And of course, I'm talking about Amazon here. But you can connect these via the USB ports on a number of these devices. And once you connect them, if you go through the compatibility list of these vendors, find the, compatibility, uh, the compatible uh, CD, DVD, and Blu-ray readers that are compatible with these devices over USB, and then you can access that CD on this NAS like it would be any other kind of external media. And then you can just lift the file. Now, sometimes you're gonna need a more, you know, complex program like Xcopy, or some of the, uh, QNAP has got a few software um, that it recommends because they've got a few NAS solutions with Blu-ray drives built in, but it allows you to rip all of that optical media into a digital form, which you can then enjoy, just like all the other video files. So if you've got a bit of spare time there and you're twiddling your thumbs, that gives you something to do right now whilst killing time so you can get out of the house and converting all that optical media that some of which you've probably not watched for years into this format, you'll feel, find it quite rewarding and you might even have some old stuff on there that you just can't download anywhere online. So that's something to try out. Next, number six, taking advantage of the surveillance software inside the NAS. Now, technically a number of you are probably gonna be doing this anyway, but the reason I highlight it in my top seven things to do with your NAS while you're sat at home twiddling your thumbs is because if you don't want to go out of your way to buy IP cameras and you were thinking, oh, well, it's nice to have that software, but these cameras are 30 to 50 quid a pop. Well, it's not necessarily that tough to use cameras. You have two main options if you don't want to spend anything. If you've got old mobile phones knocking around your home, old Android phones, I don't even have to be very modern ones at that. You can convert these into cameras for surveillance. QNAP allows you to install an application to convert your phone into an IP camera to be picked up by its surveillance station and QVR Pro software, and you just need to make sure there's a battery source, or you can utilize 
um, third party apps like IP cam and stuff like that to convert old phones into IP cameras as well. If you're a Synology user, Synology have actually got a couple of very good programs that you can take advantage of that allow you to live stream from a mobile phone as well as Synology's own live cam software that we talked about last year that converts your phone into a camera for surveillance station 8.2. So if you've got old cameras knocking around, you can turn these into a nice surveillance setup. And if that's not enough, you can even use old webcams that you've got knocking around, old USB webcams, connect them into the USB ports of your QNAP NAS and allow you to use those as cameras in that surveillance setup using a US a cam to USB software that they arrive with and you can download completely for free. Even the um, Synology application allows you to live stream those feeds as well in case you want to utilize those cameras to talk with people online and communicate with people who are also in self-isolation. Now, there's a lot you can do with live streaming those cameras. You can even host a complete live stream if you want uh, with D2J, um, I believe it's known as, from QNAP that allows you to do a whole YouTube live stream or third party without YouTube live stream to viewers, family members and friends directly from any of these camera means that I've just talked about from the NAS. And it's something to play with and you can use old webcams or even your existing phone or an old phone if you so choose. Now, what is our number seven? Nice and simple. You can use these devices to help people. You can install applications like um, Boink, I think it's all Boink, whatever it's known as, or the Folding Project. So Folding at Home, that allow you to convert NASes into devices that when your CPU and memory and hardware resources aren't being actively used, it can go towards medical research where they are uh, analyzing DNA structure, analyzing the breakdown of how viruses and infections work so they can create simulations to you know, come up with cures. And it's something that's been running for a long time for PCs and Macs and Linux servers, and NASes do that as well. You can run these programs in the background on the NAS so when it goes into standby mode, those hardware resources can then be diverted and used by these projects to hopefully change lives. And these are seven things that you can be doing with your NAS whilst in self-isolation and twiddling your thumbs. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or thought of other things that I've not mentioned, let me know in the comments. Click like if you enjoyed this, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.